In this tutorial, we will demonstrate how to drive mDrummer in your host using the MIDI command method. I will be using Ableton Live, but this will work in all popular digital audio workstations and also in the standalone version. Firstly, let's load an instance of mDrummer VST into a MIDI track. Now we can choose a drum set to work with. Next, we will need to create a second MIDI track to pass instructions onto mDrummer. For the output, select mDrummer VST. The MIDI command method actually uses MIDI channel 1, but I will choose channel 10 a channel commonly used with VSTs, to demonstrate how much time you can save using the MIDI command method versus the traditional methods many of us are accustomed to. Channel 10 instructs mDrummer to play the single components that make up our drum set. I have prepared an 8 bar drum pattern in the traditional way, so let's have a quick listen. There are a lot of notes involved with this short clip. It took a few minutes to make and it still lacks any sort of feel. So let's choose MIDI channel 1 and we can go over how mDrummer's MIDI command method can speed the whole process up for us. Instead of using all those MIDI notes, I will draw in a simple sequence and explain what the notes mean after hearing it back. The seven notes I have placed on C-1 instruct mDrummer to play a groove. The note on C-2 instructs mDrummer to play an outro, then finish. Notes on the C-2 to C-1 octave instruct mDrummer to play an intro. C-1 to C-0 instructs mDrummer to play a groove. C-0 to C-1 instructs mDrummer to play a groove, finished with a break. C-1 to C-2 instructs mDrummer to play a long break. C2 to C3 instructs mDrummer to play an outro, then finish. C3 and above instructs mDrummer to stop, though we advise you to only use the C3 octave to stop, so the other octaves can remain free for later use. Now we know how the notes and octaves relate to mDrummer, let's make this beat a little more interesting. Again, I'll go over what the notes mean after hearing it back. Play intro, play groove, play groove finished with a break, play groove, play groove finished with a break, play groove, stop, play groove, play outro then finish. You may be wondering, what if a note is placed on a different semitone in the same octave? Well, let's see. I will move all notes up to the tenth semitone in each octave. The beat was louder and more complex. This is because mDrummer relates the semitones to different degrees of the level parameter. We can use this to our advantage to help make distinguishable differences between the verse and chorus parts of our beat. There are 12 semitones in one octave. mDrummer relates the first semitone, C, to a 0% level, and the 11th semitone, B, to a 100% level.
Let's use what we've learned so far to create a simple arrangement. I'll draw in seven bars of groove, followed by a groove finished with a break. Now I'll duplicate the clip four times and add a one bar MIDI clip at the end. I will draw a note on C2 to instruct M Drummer to play an outro, then finish. Now I can select the whole arrangement and move it over by one bar, so I can create a one bar MIDI clip at the beginning. I will draw in a note on C-2 to instruct M Drummer to play an intro. Leaving all the notes on a C, a 0% level, I'll call this clip Verse 1. I'll move the notes of the next clip up by 7 semitones to a G, roughly a 63% level, and call this clip Chorus 1. I'll move the notes of the next clip up by three semitones to a D sharp, roughly a 27% level. And I'll call this clip first two. I'll move the notes of the next clip up by eight semitones to a G sharp, roughly a 72% level. And I'll call this clip chorus two. I'll move the notes of the next clip up by 10 semitones to an A sharp and 80% level and call this clip Chorus 3. I will repeat the same for the final clip which is intended to be an outro. I can now briefly show you how the changes have impacted on the different verse and chorus parts. Let's add some more feel to our arrangement by selecting a suitable rhythm. By default, M Drummer is set to play random loops each time. For your arrangements, you will no doubt want to have control over which loops are played and when. This is easily achieved by clicking on the additional settings button and switching off random loops. A universal parameter in all digital audio workstations is the velocity control. Therefore, with random loops switched off, the velocity control will correspond to M Drummer's loops. To hear a different loop, simply move the velocity control until you find one you want to use. Now, each time you start a clip, M Drummer will only play the loop you have set. Let's have a listen to how our changes have helped our arrangement.
all of our settings are now stored, so any changes we make to our arrangement won't affect any of our work. We can shorten Chorus 2 and move the remaining clips forward. We can move the whole arrangement over to a different time frame. We can remove Chorus 1 altogether if we want to. All settings will remain unless we choose to change them. Thanks for watching. The next MDrummer tutorial videos will involve creating drum tracks to actual songs in some of the most widely used digital audio workstations around.